And we hope that you're going to be blessed. Uh, if you could just please bear a few minutes with me as I open up our announcements, uh, which I first need to download to the PC uh, because I've just now received them. Um, the meeting is now being recorded to our Facebook family. Uh, welcome and thank you so much for joining us. I see a lot of people, guys, if you haven't yet shared the link, we are only seated at 35 people. I know that there's supposed to be thousands and thousands of other people. So we have changed our Zoom. The link has changed. The login details have also consequently changed. So if you know somebody that is supposed to be here right now and they do not have the link, please take time off. Go on to your WhatsApp, go on to your Instagram or whatever social media platform you are using and share the link with them. I'm going to be sharing our announcements with us in the next few seconds. And I hope, and here they are. Okay, I've got two items that I need to share. And here we go. Let me share this one first. Share screen. And here it is, guys, the message from our technical team, uh, Kosi, being the lady behind it. That video, you only saw four people, and that is because those are just the anchors, but you know that 230 Conversations is made up of more than four people. There's many, many people uh, behind the team. I think in total, the technical team has about uh, eight people. Uh, and then there's obviously you and many, many others there that are support of this program. Hi, everybody. The 230 Conversations team would like to welcome you back to yet another exciting year. We hope you are ready for what we have in store for you. It's going to be a great year, and we are looking forward to it. So buckle up and invite your friends, your family, your ex-girlfriend, the lady that you've got a crush on, that boy that you've been eyeing. Invite all of them. They must come and join us here. Kindly note that for 230 Conversations programs, the login details have changed. So in the event that you are struggling with the Zoom link, please contact Brother Ashley on 076-890-5511 or Brother Tandazo on 073-974-8498 uh, or alternatively use the following details to log in. The meeting ID is there and the passcode is also there. So quickly take a picture before I move this. And this is yours truly, 230 Conversations. I'm going to stop sharing the screen now and I'll be sharing a different screen in the next few minutes. Uh, and there it is, our announcements. Uh, welcome back to 230 Conversations. Man, I love this. Look at the logo. New beginnings, new things, rebranding, thoughts, discussions, and facilitations that hasn't changed. We remain 230 Conversations. Thank you so much to all those that have volunteered uh, to design for us and to make posters for us. We're inundated with many people making these offers. We are eternally grateful. Uh, and there you see our new logo. Don't be surprised if you see changes here and there because we've got so many people offering us. We might be bumping our ideas uh, back and forth. I have taken us through the welcome back. Good people, follow 230 Conversations on our social handles. We are on YouTube, we are on Facebook, we are on Instagram. You will not believe it. We've also opened a TikTok account. So please follow us. Look at us. We have rebranded. Everything is looking amazing. Because in demand, you are an awesome person to work with. And these are amazing graphics indeed. The fear factor with Umfundisi Uesi. I'm just going to call him Uesi before I uh, twist my tongue. We pronounced his name as Fabiwe and we were in trouble. Hey, we had a lot of guys from Botswana texting us and says, no, it's Fabiwe, not Fabiwe. Please stop South Africanizing our pastor's name. He's an interesting chap. We've had awesome things about him. He's from Heidelberg or Hildeberg, wherever it is where Christ dwells. That is where he is from. And you will be seeing him shortly. Behold, a new thing starting a new year. Pastor Isaac Apo is joining us on the 22nd of January, 2022. You do not want to miss it. Uh, brothers and sisters, you know how we roll with 230 Conversations. We've actually planned out for the entire year. So all our programs for the entire year have already been lined up. We've got speakers, I think, for the first three months. By the end of this week, we should be having speakers for the uh, first six months. And I believe that by the 
time that next week, the following week comes, the week after the next, we should have all our speakers for the entire year. So please stay tuned. And if you feel that there's a speaker, you know how it is. Tell us if you've got a speaker that you'd love us to invite onto the platform. You know her. She's been here before. Of course, he has used the wrong poster. Uh, hint, hint. It's Mbumi K. Bonane with an E at the end. She's going to be talking about self-audit, the toxicity in you. What a phenomenal person. We've had her on 230 Conversations before, and she will be coming back. Patriarchy, uh, angry man. Rendani Makatu, son of thunder, is going to be joining us. I don't know if that name is supposed to have an H there, uh, but if not, forgive us, we will fix it. Uh, Rendani is going to be joining us, the son of thunder, on the 5th of February. Men and suicide, the scourge, Pastor Lester Parkinson, is going to be with us on the 12th of February, 2022. For airtime contributions, please contact with Tandazo and myself and we will be able to assist you if you need airtime if you know you know that we run the data fund if you wish to contribute to our data fund uh please uh contact myself uh on tandas or on these numbers that are appearing on this note i just want to take a moment uh i don't think that any of them are here but we want to thank the northern conference in absentia the northern conference came to us and they say 230 conversations what an awesome program. We want to contribute to your data fund and we are not going to be giving you 1,000 Rand. We are not going to be giving you 2,000 Rand. We are not going to be giving you 500 Rand. No, are we going to give you 20,000 Rand? But what we can do is that we will give you 10,000 Rand. And I wish somebody can just type an amen. The Northern Conference came and said to us, yes, 10,000 Rand towards your data fund and get yourself a better Zoom as well. So thank you so much to the Northern Conference. We are indebted to you. And we know that Stasa also played a role there. So we are very, very grateful to the Northern Conference. And so guys, keep on contributing to the data funds. I also want to thank my team members. I know you guys go out of the way to ensuring that 230 Conversations happens and you deep, deep into your pockets to make this program a success. Let's continue doing that and may God bless you. Brothers and sisters, at this stage, I'm going to ask that you turn off your videos if they are on, you mute yourself, which I think we have already done. Uh, we are going to be moving on now to our presentation. Uh, Senzo, we say turn off your video, Senzo. It is not Tinder, it is 2.30 conversations. Relax, my brother. That is brother Senzo there, you will hear him when he starts to comment, powerful young man. Uh, ladies, hint, hint. Uh, but today, we are joined by a very awesome being, Umpundise Utlabiwe, as I had said, he is going to be taking us through. It is his moment. The title says Fear Factor, and I'm going to be handing over to him now. Umpundise, may you humbly unmute yourself and also turn on your video, my pastor. Uh, this is an awesome person, and um, Umpundise, I was just interacting with him. Uh, a few minutes ago when we started the platform, I see there's already someone with their hand up. I'll give you an opportunity later, Metsi. So I'm just muting you for now. Mpundisi, young man, uh, all the way from Botswana, currently in South Africa, pursuing uh, his degree in theology. I believe he is in his final year. He is the founder of a podcast known as The Land, which I hope that is going to share more info and insight into perhaps at the end of his presentation or even before uh, as the spirit leads the land you guys want to hear more about it uh, please support it it's a podcast that is soon going to be starting mainly focused uh, in the region of Botswana but the ideas that are being discussed go far and wide are even broader than Botswana but he's going to tell us more about that and please thank you so much for sparing your time to come and join us as young people May God bless you and may God use you right now in a mighty way. So I'm going to hand over to you and I'm going to ask that you open us for, for us in prayer and that you take us through the program. God bless you. All right. Uh, let us pray. Uh, dear Lord, we thank you for what you have done in this program and what you will do in this program. Be with us. May be with me. May we hear your word and may, uh, may we see Jesus in everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, now, those who know me will know that um, I like response. So in church, I like a church that responds. But now, uh, because we are on Zoom, 
<clears throat> sorry, because we are on Zoom now, I will greet you and I hope that you respond by either typing amen or showing your hand or showing any reaction that is there, uh, appropriate, of course. Um, so I will greet you in just a minute. I greet you all in Jesus' name, and then I give you this opportunity to respond. Um, I trust that we are all well. Okay, I see you are very active. I trust that we are all well. Um, I trust that God is still good to us, to everybody. Uh, Happy New Year. Uh, <laughs> um, may, I, I hope that we are blessed today. Uh, before I continue, usually, um, well, before I continue, I'd like to acknowledge that uh, from Botswana, I'm not alone. Uh, there are friends and family in this room as we speak who are also here. So uh, I have come with, <laughs> with, with, with forces. Uh, may you please show uh, by just raising your hand there, wherever you are, if you are from Botswana, just to show that we are represented. Uh, hallelujah, I see, you see, yeah, people in Botswana are very active, we respond fast, thank you very much. Um, yes, uh, allow me to share my screen at this point. Uh, just one minute, here is he was first. <laughs> okay, can you just confirm that my screen is visible? before we proceed. Ashley, is my screen visible that side? Yes, Pastor, it is visible. Awesome. If you could maybe just make it full screen. All right. Okay. Just one second. I just need to move this around. Yes. Um, yes. All right. I trust that it's full screen now. Uh, so the 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 the, the topic that I was assigned was, or is fear factor. Um, I believe we have heard my name already. Okay. Now, a, a few disclaimers before I move any further. Uh, number one, I am no authority in psychology and related sciences. So I will not discuss the matter of fear from a psychological perspective or give scientific evidence after evidence. Um, I am not writing an academic paper, uh, but we will be speaking to our experience. Number two, reference will be made to specific biblical texts and not a somewhat comprehensive view. So it's not an overview of what fear is in the Bible, but we'll look at specific instances where fear um, comes out and is clear in the narrative. Now, uh, we won't be looking at fear in its entirety. So we won't be discussing um, how you deal with a fear of dogs, uh, how, you, how you deal with a fear of heights or, 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 or a fear of circles that are closely compacted together. I don't remember the name. Uh, we will be looking at fears that specifically prevent us from living. Um, so, so, so these are existential fears. Uh, in looking through the Bible, we will look at responses to fear. So both human and divine responses. Uh, now I want us to define what fear is now. Uh, according to dictionary.com, fear is a distressing emotion aroused by impending danger, evil, pain, etc. Whether the threat is real or imagined, the feeling or condition of being afraid. Essentially, what dictionary.com suggests is that whether a threat is 
constructed by your mind or, or it is a real threat. Fear is a response to this threat. Um, fear is a distressing emotion uh, that is aroused by a threat or danger, evil or pain that is about to come, right, or impending. According to Cambridge Dictionary, uh, fear is an unpleasant emotion or thought that you have when you are frightened or worried by something dangerous, painful, or bad that is happening or might happen. So essentially, there, there, there are two fundamental aspects to fear. Either it's a present reality or something that has not happened yet, or there is a chance that it might happen. For example, if you walk through a bush, you know that even though you do not see a snake, there is a chance that there may be a snake in that bush. Um, it is also an emotion or thought, and it's linked to fright um, and worry. And some may even link it to anxiety. So our premise, where we start our conversation, number one, that fear is a natural response to danger and possible uh, and possible danger. Uh, so if something is before, if you see a lion, um, we expect you to respond fearfully uh, because the lion is a present danger. Uh, but also fear is a natural response to possible danger as we have uh, just discussed. Number two, that without fear, we would be incredibly susceptible to danger. So, if you see a lion, as we have uh, noted, if you do not feel fear, you will be a, 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 an easy target for the lion because fear then ignites this uh, response of either fight or flight. So you either fight the lion, which uh, probably will end badly, or you run away, or somehow you, 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 you come out of the situation. Number three, that fear is a multifaceted experience. So I mean it this way. Um, there is no one type of fear. Uh, there is no one experience that we can unilaterally agree that this alone is fear. Um, there are different types of fear and there are different experiences in fear. So fear is a multifaceted experience. Number four, that fear can be natural, adopted through conditioning or learned. So you can naturally fear something, right? Um, as humans, I believe that there are some things that we fear naturally, um, or even that we have adopted from our predecessors. So the fact that, I mean, uh, we, in, 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 in Botswana, for example, um we do not have falls um so like victoria falls in zimbabwe and zambia now it would be very weird for a Motswana to naturally fear uh falling off of 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 of, of, a, of a cliff or from a river over falls or a, 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 being a Motswana and never having seen a shark not even on tv or anywhere i'm not saying i haven't i'm just saying an example um, it would be very weird to fear a shark because this is something that I have not naturally and my ancestors did not have, so I could not have adopted it. Now, there are fears that are natural and adopted through, through, through genealogy, and there are fears that are adopted through conditioning, so you're conditioned to fear something, and there are fears that are learned, and uh, psychologists and, 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 and other behavioral scientists and people are, are, are across that field will, 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 will speak more to that. Now, therefore, I would like us to proceed with the following definition. A nat uh, fear is a natural response to any threatening or unintelligible stimuli or stimulus that elicits anxiety. Let me explain. Um, imagine you're sitting in an open field and it's dark. You are sitting with your five friends. The six of you are sitting on chairs. 
you're sitting around a fire, it's an open field, it's dark and there are stars in the sky, all of you are stargazing. Now, because all your friends are accounted for, you know that none of them is outside of that area. Now, if you are sitting and you feel a hand touch your shoulder, because you cannot easily interpret this stimulus and attach it to something you know, you may feel fear. That is why I put in unintelligible stimuli. So this is something that we cannot understand. Another example, when an angel appears to Mary or Joseph, the first thing that it says is do not fear, right? So this is a response that uh, is, well, this is a response to a stimulus that cannot be easily interpreted sometimes. So therefore this definition would also include a fear of the future, a fear of the unknown, a fear of possibility, a fear of achieving your dreams and many other fundamental existential crises. Um, fear becomes problematic when it moves from being an impermanent emotional response to an experience, an event, or a condition. So uh, when, when, when we feel fear responding to something that is threatening, it is okay. But when it becomes an existential crisis where you cannot live because of fear, then we have a problem. And then the final point is it's the response to fear that matters. Now I want us to look at a few texts or a few stories in the Bible um, that we can link somehow to fear. And so we hope uh, to find solutions in those. The first is Moses. In Exodus chapter 3 verse 11, this is where God appears to Moses in the burning bush. And in that burning bush, God speaks to Moses and calls him. Now, in, in Moses' response to the call, Moses says, uh, but Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? Now, remember that Moses had killed an Egyptian in Egypt and he was out of Egypt. Uh, he was a fugitive. So it is somewhat logical for Moses to suggest that he cannot go back. Now, Moses enters into a negotiation with God because he says, look, uh, I, I'm scared. I cannot do this. Um, God says, no, I am with you. Say that. OK, what do I say to Pharaoh? Say that the I am has sent you. Um, God, I cannot speak. I will send your brother Aaron. So there's this negotiation that goes on between God and Moses that stems from a fear that Moses has. Now, the response then that is interesting is that God supplies provisions to Moses to lighten the load. So he gives him a, 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 a name to stand by, which is his name. But he also gives him or, or he also lightens his load by saying, I will, uh, I, will, I will send your brother Aaron to be with you. So essentially, that which motivates the actions that God has called Moses to do is fundamentally that they are empowered by God. So God's response is both his provisions and his presence. Now, because this is, a, is, not, this is not a sermon, I will not be going too in depth into each of these stories, but we will be picking the essentials for this presentation. Uh, now, the second uh, story that we will look at is Israel's liberation. So after uh, the debacle between Moses and Pharaoh in Egypt, and there is an agreement that the Israelites will move out of Egypt, um, uh, Pharaoh pursues the Israelites. And in verse 10 to 12 of Exodus chapter four, uh, it reads, as Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up and there were the Egyptians marching after them. They were terrified and cried out to the Lord. 
they said to Moses, was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us to the desert to die? What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? Didn't we say to you in Egypt, leave us alone, let us serve the Egyptians? It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. Now in Moses' case, his fear caused him to, to, to feel inadequate to do the work. In this case, fear, can, fear caused the Israelites to prefer the devil they knew. So it was better to stay with the Egyptians than to pursue an unknown that God had promised them. Um, and so that unknown is a threat and that threat causes a fear of the unknown but God delivers them. Uh, he opens the Red Sea, they cross, and they, 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 for 40 years, they travel to the promised land and God delivers his promise. Uh, but we see, I believe we, 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 we see the problem that fear has caused, especially existentially in these first two examples. Number three is what I call the grasshopper conundrum. And this is something that many of us uh, can relate with. Uh, there is a commission to go and spy on the promised land. And when the spies return, uh, the, the, the spies report is that we cannot conquer these people. And then Numbers chapter 13, verses 30 to 33. But Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and occupy it for we are well able to overcome it. So essentially we have the capacity to overcome. Um, then the men who had gone up with him said, we are not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we are. Now listen to the logic. So they brought to the people of Israel a bad report of the land that they had spied out saying the land through which we have gone to spy it out, is a land that devours its inhabitants. And all the people that we saw in it are of great height. And there we saw the Nephilim, the sons of Anak who come from the Nephilim. And we seemed to ourselves like grasshoppers. And so we seemed to them. Now, understand that the logic is the people are stronger than we are. The land itself devours its inhabitants. So if, even if we can conquer the people, we cannot maintain and we cannot uh, sustain the land itself. The land itself will defeat us. And also compared to them, we are but grasshoppers. Um, and, 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 and this is how we see ourselves and how they see us. Now this fear, has caused a belittling of self, a belittling of the community that they belong to, and a belittling of their ability or, or their capacity to take over the land, eventually belittling the very promise of God. Another example. Now, don't worry, we'll come back and reconcile all of these. Another example is Elijah. Now, Elijah, um, after he had killed the, the prophets of Baal, uh, Jezebel writes or, or sends a message to, to Elijah and says, may the gods do unto me as you did to the prophets if I do not deal with you. Now, then uh, 1 Kings 19, verse 3 to 9, Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. When he came to Beersheba in Judah, he left his servant there. Verse 4, while he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, he came to a broom bush, sat down under it, and prayed that he might die. Now, this is the fear. I have had enough, Lord. Now, the fear that he has... has was the straw that broke the camel's back, as the English would say. 
essentially it was it was the final straw i'm done i'm finished god um take my life i am no better than my ancestors then he lay down under the bush and fell asleep all at once an angel touched him and said get up and eat he looked around and there by his head was some bread baked over hot coil hot coals <laughs> sorry and a jar of water he ate and drank and then lay down again the angel of the lord came back a second time and touched him and said get up and eat for the journey is too much for you so he got up and ate and drank strengthened by that food he traveled 40 days and 40 nights until he reached horeb the mountain of god there he went into a cave and spent the night uh sorry so in this case uh the fear that elijah had crippled him enough to see death as a a a a a, a peaceful repose to his struggle uh and so he prays god that god may take his life and this is the fear uh, that elijah had another or the last example that we have is elisha's servant an example that i believe many of us are conversant with uh second kings chapter 6 verses 15 to 17 now the king had sent uh his 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 armies to pursue elisha and so it reads when the servant of the man of god got up and went out early the next morning an army with horses and chariots had surrounded the city oh no my lord what shall we do the servant asked don't be afraid the prophet answered those who are with us are more than those who are with them and elisha prayed opened his eyes lord oh and elisha prayed open his eyes lord so that he may see then the lord opened the servant's eyes and he looked and saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around elisha now elisha suggests to his servant that though the odds seem stacked against them those that stand on their side are greater than their opposition now it may be interesting to also suggest that his answer comes before the prayer so the fact that the servant sees um the chariots should not change the knowledge that those who are with them are greater than those who are against them God responds by opening the eyes of the servant and exposing him to God's own action plan. Now the submissions that I have uh from these stories are these that number 1 that fundamentally in the selected biblical text fear is hum- is a human experience or a human response it is natural Uh, 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 it is within our human nature uh, but it is how we respond to the fear uh, that uh, is is pivotal number 2 that there is no one response either by man or god to control or alleviate fear now if you look carefully across um, especially these stories there is somewhat of a slightly different response in each in each story and in that way i believe that even in our own fears whether we fear uh, starting a business uh, or or have any other fears that um, i may not know of that god responds to our fears uh, not necessarily in the same way and also how we deal with these fears and how we manage these fears isn't necessarily always the same Number 3 that fear mutates into a problem. Now this goes with the first point that though fe- though fear is a human response it mutates in it has the capacity to mutate into a problem and become a condition. Now this is where uh, 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 God's responses come in. Number 4 that god's ideal is humanity that does not submit to fear fear is a reality 
but God's ideal is a humanity that does not submit to the, to, 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 to the strength or to the rule of fear. Uh, <laughs> um, so I have a few recommendations based off of uh, the, 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 the stories that we have, went, we have gone through. Number one, simplify. Now you reali realize in Moses' story that Moses says to God, this is too complicated for me. Um, or, or I am a nobody. I cannot do this. Not necessarily I'm a nobody, but I cannot do this. So God says, okay, fine. Um, do this, right? Uh, say that I am with you. I have sent you. But God, I cannot speak. Okay, get Aaron. Now, in this discussion, one thing that can be picked is that when the stimulus is big, simplify. Um, when, 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 when Moses said the stimulus is too big, the task is too big, I cannot speak. I, have a, oh, I, I cannot speak. Uh, he said, okay, simplify. I will simplify it for you by getting Aaron. Moses also in the future, um, his father-in-law says to him, Moses, you are tired. Get people to deal with the things that do not need your personal attention. So then delegation comes in and it's simplified. So when the stimulus is too big, if you want to start a, a company and, and, and it is scary, uh, you want to, 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 to start, you, you don't begin by saying, okay, I am starting a company that will replace Uber. I am making an African Uber uh, owned and run by Africans um, and it's going to happen tomorrow. It does not work or it does not work like that immediately. You start off by getting in a car and picking up one person in Sentin, taking them to Soweto. Um, the next day you pick another person, uh, take them from Randberg and take them, uh, and take them to Soweto. Um, and then after that, you pick another person and transport them. You pick another and transport them. Eventually, maybe the next month, you have another car this person picks people in Cape Town uh, from Somerset West to CBD and so on and so forth. And it grows. When you simplify the tasks, the stimulus becomes much more interpretable than the bigger stimulus. Number two, do not allow fear to make you miss pain. Now, this is an experience that I believe many of us, if not all of us have. If we experience some sort of traumatic event, right? Uh, we may get into a slump, right? And we may fear progressing, right? Now, I have seen practically where people fear to progress because they, because this fear does not allow them to depart from a devil that they are used to. So essentially this fear logically says to them, look, you understand this pain, this trauma, stay here. Imagine facing uh, other trauma outside. And this is where we see uh, the Israelites. They know the Egyptians, sorry, this is a trauma that they know. They have experience. Essentially, they're saying, I know how to deal with these people. This is how we've been doing things. There is no need to change. The fear implores them to think that it is essential to stay in pain. Therefore, do not allow fear to make you miss past pain. Number three, accept that the unknown is unknown. Many a times we want to, 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 to know everything, even though it is unknown. You don't know what tomorrow holds. I don't know what tomorrow holds. Um, when you start a company, when you start a business, uh, you don't know what will happen. But the fact that it is not known doesn't mean that you should not try. 
Rem- leave the unknown as unknown and stay with the known that you know and move into the unknown. And eventually it will become the known. Uh, number four, the unknown is not necessarily impossible. The fact that you do not know what will happen, the fact that you do not know how the war will go with the Canaanites, even though God has promised you the promised land. But there is some sort, this fear causes you to to not be sure of, of how things will go. Even though this is so, it does not mean that it is impossible. Um, God, in this instance particularly, makes a point to prove that even though the people are stronger, even though the people are, 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 are taller, even though the land swallows its inhabitants, even though these people are grasshoppers, God makes a point of making sure that the grasshoppers defeat the giants. Number five, rest. In Elijah's instance, it is important to realize that in Elijah's, um, let's call it a depression, the response that happens there is Elijah rests and he is replenished physiologically. Sometimes all we need is to rest. Um, when, when our fears take over, sometimes all we need is to take time, uh, sometimes take time with God, sometimes just remove all the, the distractions, uh, replenish yourself physiologically, eat, drink, make sure you're okay, then we can move on. And then the last recommendation, sometimes an emphasis on sometimes, God gives a glimpse of his action plan. And I want us to note that God doesn't always give a glimpse of his action plan. Uh, sometimes God reveals what he will do with you, but sometimes, but a lot of times God does not. Now, the final recommendation that is not there, which I believe is implied by our very presence here, is trust in God um, to, in, 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 in dealing with fear. Our fundamental premise is that God helps us and that God can help us um, fight our fears, especially our existential fears. Now, the conclusion that I have is number two, is, is two points. Number one, fear must not rule. Uh, fear may be a human response, but uh, in Swana we say how kwa utwa ka 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 poiho. Or in English, in English is difficult, but you you cannot be ruled by fear. Um, fear cannot command you. Uh, and number two, do not fear. Now this injunction both recognizes that fear is natural but also recognizes that fear is, 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 is temporary. It's a temporary emotional response. It comes and it must move. So do not fear. Uh, you, 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 you may fear stimuli that are threatening or you cannot interpret immediately, such as the future, such as the unknown, such as the dark, uh, but do not fear. Uh, do not let fear rule your life. Do not let fear um, command you. And by, by God, through Jesus Christ, we know that we have nothing to fear. Even Ellen White says we have nothing to fear for the future, lest we forget how the Lord has led us in the past. Um, this is the conclusion of my matter. Uh, thank you very much for listening. Um, I believe I'm done. Amen and amen. Thank you so much, Mpundisi. Um, unfortunately, you are wrong in your belief. You're just getting started. Um, what an amazing presentation. Short, sweet, straight to the point. Um, just because it is unknown, 
does not mean that it is impossible. You know, those are the words that should be ringing to you as you're going into that interview. And you're wondering how did I even manage to secure this spot to be interviewed? I mean, I'm just an average student. There's probably distinction student, uh, students, you know, who could do better off, uh, but there it is. Just because it is unknown does not mean that it is impossible. I'm sure we can make various references to specific instances when we were in fear. And that being said, we're gonna open it up now. Let's talk, let's ask the pastor questions. Facebook, we see you guys there. Uh, this is the time now where we interact with our speaker. There is a, a button just bottom of your screen that says reactions. If you click on that, it permits you to raise your hand. I will be on the lookout now for any hands that are raised. And when I select you, I'm going to request that you unmute yourself. You either share with us your own experience of fear and how you overcame, or you ask the pastor a question or just make any comment uh, or remark in passing. Uh, all of that is welcome. Um, Fundisi, I think fear has far reaching consequences. I love how you opened up when you spoke about fear and that uh, it's a natural um, feeling or emotion to have. In fact, I once listened to a man that said that any person that is without fear is a dangerous human being. Uh, they're a danger to society and they're a danger uh, to themselves as well. Uh, I see, so it's you are dangerous without fear. You are dangerous if you fail to control and manage the fear that you are exposed to. So Matinje, now what we need to do is find some uh, common ground. Uh, so good people, let's interact with the speaker. The speaker is gonna be taking questions. He's gonna be taking comments. Raise your hand, we'll pick you up. I already see one hand is up. Uh, let us see more hands coming up. Uh, anybody that has a question for the speaker on Facebook, uh, please type out your questions and we will uh, read them out to the speaker. Welcome to the Facebook community. We see all of you there uh, that have joined Frederick Circle also just joining now. Uh, so you just type your comment. Those that are on Zoom, you can also make use of the chat box. Uh, type in there if you are shy like I am and you are afraid of uh, switching on your video or you know unmuting yourself type your comment and we will also uh, read it out and share it with the pastor. Brother Senzo, my good, good friend, uh, over to you, sir. Yeah, thanks for the beautiful presentation, my brother. Uh, it was very nice. Um, when you talk about fear, I actually, it reminds me of the story of um, Peter and Jesus Christ in the Garden of Gethsemane when uh, Peter, um, when the soldiers came, you know, Peter was overtaken by fear, quickly took his, um, took, took a knife and tried to cut the other soldier's eye and stuff like that. And uh, Jesus Christ uh, was like, no, relax, relax. I think that I know Christ has run out of plan. You know, that's what he thought. You know, he thought Christ ran out of plan. Even in the boat, when they were with Jesus Christ, the storm was overcoming them. They, they didn't know what to do, you know, we're busy trying to put the water outside, like up on the sea, like to, to clean the boat, to clear the, 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 the uh, to close wherever the loopholes that were there that were bringing water inside the boat because of the storm that was raging. And then Jesus Christ, once again, show that, ah, no, don't be controlled by fear. Just as you said, he just, he just stood up and said, peace be still, you know, in a calm manner, relaxed, you know, not uh, acting like Peter, you know, and because I think, one of the things that fear can make us do things that we have not planned. We can take decisions that are not good because of fear. We, we cannot make proper decisions because of fear. So I think uh, it's a good lesson to teach us about fear that uh, fear is maybe there, but do not let it dominate. Don't let it control. Um, don't let it, con because you don't know, you don't know the unknown, you know? So thank you so much for the lesson. I really, learned a lot about fear and uh, I think from now onwards, I know I will just be like uh, Jesus Christ and then become Je when I see the storm or just stay peace, be still. Thank you so much. Amen. Thank you so much, Brother Senzo. Uh, that was a comment, a powerful comment coming from Senzo. Uh, let's see if we can get the, the hands. 
I see there's a 2.30 conversation that he's typing there. Makes it very awkward because I'm also 2.30 conversation. Sabi Seng is about to enter. You can come in, Sabi Seng. Uh, now, it makes it very awkward because I'm 2.30 conversations as well, and he's also 2.30 conversations. Sorry, don't mind my friends uh, that are coming in there. Maybe I should just put my video on hold for a while. Um, I was just saying that 2.30 conversations, what are you saying? Do you want to comment? Is your hand up? I don't know who you are because now I'm responding Hi, to I'm you and I'm also 2.30 conversations. Yes, sir. Uh, you don't know your colleagues now. But we are all 2.30 now there. Everyone is 2.30. My God. Anyway, can I come in with a comment? Thank you for the opportunity. Man. I just want to applaud the pastor. First and foremost, at face value, I appreciate how seriously he takes his ministry. He's got a logo, he looks, he looks professional. So may he continue with that. I'd like to encourage him with him. As he's going on a professional one, may God use him mightily, okay, moving forward. So I just wanted to make a contribution um, based on a lived experience. So this is just personal and this is what I've learned. I wanna make a contribution perhaps, it may help somebody. So sometimes you get a feeling, you know, um, like you are uneasy and you feel like something is making you fearful. I mean, my mind yeah, always gives me warnings with, okay, I probably might get some bad news or something might go wrong in my life or whatever for that day or for that week or for whatever else. So I want to just bring a lived experience and to encourage somebody to see, you know, sometimes when you're fearful and you're uneasy and you're confused and you don't understand, Prayer does something for you, you know, especially when you're able to point out and say, Ish, that's me. It's something I don't understand about how I'm feeling right now. And for now, I'm contributing from a context of fear, even, you know. So, prayer, you know, when you feel good, I'm fearful, can I pray right now? Tell it to God and say, I don't know why I'm fearful. I don't know why I'm feeling the way that I'm feeling, but I feel that something might go wrong. I feel that something. I have a reason to be fearful, but I'm going to come to you and I'm going to claim that you give me either the courage, you give me the strength, or you evade whatever danger might be coming my way. And more often than not, this is a lived experience, like I was saying. This is five minutes, six minutes, 10 minutes, 15, 30. You feel that fear or a cloud that is dark, you know, moving away from you. You know, you would feel it as in whatever I was feeling at the time, it's moving away. So in the context of fear, I would like to say, Guti, uh, on times where you're feeling fearful, all right, whether it's a long-term fear, it's a short-term fear about something that is a project you're about to endeavor in, or it's something about a trip you're about to take at that moment or in an hour for, for now, and you feel fearful, please take refuge in prayer. And that is my testimony. Thanks to my leader for that beautiful presentation. Thank you for the building up. Thank you for um, you know, creating a contextual understanding where we are and, and how we need to approach fear and what other way we could you know, um, evade or rather to, to seek ways to actually come out victorious. Thank you for that contribution. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much for that powerful contribution, uh, Leander. Uh, <laughs> I see. Uh, Ivan or Nozi, I don't know who is typing there for the Panhera and says, hey, the Bible condemns the fearful, but a black mamba is not a joke, but it's, uh, the most excited participant, we know who you are and we know your squeaky voice. I'm going to unmute you now. Brother Tandazo, take us through. <laughs> I'm out of ash. <laughs> All right, thank you so much, Charles. Uh, thank you to Mfundisa. Thank you for um, the presentation, we, we love how this year has started. Um, and, and wow, man, if, if all our speakers could have such background and such seriousness, we would love that as the, as the year goes by. So Mfundis, you've set up a precedence and thank God. I got, I got questions. Uh, let me start with the first one. Let me start with the first one. Uh, I got questions, all right? Okay, let me move here, because it just, right. So I got questions here. Number one being, um, is fear is fear an indictment of faith? Is is that a sign that I've lost the faith, 
I'm not as faithful as I could be. I don't trust God, uh, hence I'm fearful. So are we saying that for the average Christian, fear must never exist? While it's human, yes. While it is uh, natural, yes. But in the Christian realm, should that be an acceptable behavioral pattern that we should be fearful? And, and, and like the question goes, is that an indictment of the faith? Is the fearful unnecessarily the faithless? That's number one. Uh, the second one would be this, and to everyone on the platform as well. Um, I want to, this before the end of the year, I want to do bungee jumping. Um, I've been watching videos. The more I watch them, the more fearful I become. The latest that I watched, which was this week, this was on the Grand Canyon. It is between the mountains. Now, when I was reading the comments, the everybody was, was wondering, how, how sure are we that when we're down there, we're not going to hit against the rocks? So what is the psychology of saying, I want to get married, I want to start a business, I want to um, you know, move from this place, I want to leave my job, I want to leave this toxic relationship, I want to uh, venture out and become more spiritual to read more. What, what is the psychology of doing, of, of watching that very thing that you're fearful about and getting more fearful by just simple watching it. The comments that come with it, the consequences of it and everything like that. How, how, do we, how, how does that work maybe on a psychological part? I know you said you're not a psychologist or whatsoever, but maybe Mufundis, you could probably help us and others still on the platform here. So those are my two questions. Thank you, Nyabong. Thank you, Eksho. Thank you so much, Brother uh, Tandazo. And Fundis, I think the guys are still warming up. The crew from Botswana, I know those guys have been informed. They ask a lot of questions. They're probably still warming up. So as they are warming up to raise their hands, uh, let's address Tandazo's question in the interim. I'm also going to be finding out what's happening on Facebook and in the chat section. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you very much. I think before I answer the questions, there's something I forgot to say uh, when I began. <clears throat> uh, with the videos that you were playing, there is a voiceover person there who was speaking. I would like to say to that person, if they are here or not, uh, they must join a group and sing bass. If not, we will pray for them to do so. Okay. Um, Brother Senzo, <laughs> as I, 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 I agree with you. I appreciated your comment. Um, fear makes us irrational. I mean, you, you may come to a point where if a lion or a dog is biting, not biting, but if it's running towards you, um, you, you, you do things that uh, you wouldn't normally do if you were in your right mind. Uh, so fear ha does have that effect on us. And so even in, 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 in existential problems, right? If you fear something uh, or an unknown, you may behave irrationally. Um, the, okay, the most excited participant um, fear and faith. Maybe let me start by saying that faith does not make us less human. Um, the faith is a pursuer of God, right? Um, and we must realize that we continually pursue because we stay human. Um, so we continually depend on God. We continually... So it doesn't mean that it eradicates some of the human experiences that we have. Uh, so fear itself uh, does not negate uh, faith. Um, when, when fear becomes a condition, 
right? Uh, where I can't do anything because of fear. We may have a problem, but we must also realize that the God that uh, we believe we worship, the God of, of the Bible, even in the stories that we looked at, is nurturing. So even in such cases, God deliberately uh, and faithfully, for some reason, makes sure that he assists us in that. But faith itself would be um, a holding on to Jesus. Now, if you hold on, I'm trying to uh, give an example. Uh, aha, imagine you're hanging from a pole, like a, a, a horizontal pole. Um, you may be hit uh, on the sides, you may be, you know, the fact that you are hanging on the pole or you're attached to that pole does not change everything else in, 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 your, in your surroundings. So things still happen, you still mourn. I mean, Christians, when they lose loved ones, still cry. Why? Because it's painful. Um, it doesn't change the belief in God. It doesn't change the reality of comfort and hope in Jesus Christ and in the second coming, no. Um, it's just a human reality that we cannot change. Um, you spoke of bungee jumping. Uh, I don't know why you want to bungee jump, uh, but I'll pray for you. Um, here's, here's the thing. I have a story. So there was a time I was with my friends who had gold, gold, gold reef, golden reef, one of the two. Um, and there is a roller coaster called the Tower of Death. Now, that was enough to tell me not to get on it. But because of peer pressure, what did I do? I got on. Now, the whole way there was terrifying uh, because I, I don't have an experience on a roller coaster. Tower of Terror, thank you very much, Tower of Terror. Uh, I know Terror Death, I felt like Tower of Death. Um, so I had no experience with any roller coaster whatsoever, right? Um, I wear glasses, you see. So getting onto the roller coaster, I have to take off my glasses, which means that the terror itself, I cannot see it clearly. So it, 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 it's a problem. It's problems on problems. So now I get on with my friends there, right? It takes us up, you know. Uh, we go up, 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 and we are up. <laughs> when we are there, it just stops. So now the anticipation is killing us. So, <laughs> blood terror. So when we descend, so for those who may not know, this, this, it's a small car, it fits about six, eight people. You travel from this point, you go, you turn, and then you stop. It lifts you, uh, I'll say a kilometer high because it's my story and I'll tell it like I want to. And then you stop there. And there's an immediate uh, uh, vertical descent, right? Now, for a Mutswana boy who has never been in anything that goes down, that's a problem. <laughs> so uh, uh, it, this is a very scary experience until I'm done, right? Until I get off, even after I am fearful, even after it's done. Now, the reason why I'm telling you this story is when you cannot, uh, when you haven't done something, uh, when you anticipate something, um, the natural response is fear. Now, the reason why fear grows, uh, <laughs> there's no start, fear grows, um, especially over time, right? Um, it is in the with it, it's it's in the nature of fear, um, especially when you anticipate something, um, even while you're doing the thing, because you don't know what will happen at any point. Um, but uh, fear grows. So what you do? Let's give an example of bungee jumping. I would I wouldn't do it myself, um, but because you want to go bungee jumping. The fact that you fear should not stop you from bungee jumping uh, because fear will always be there. So you respond to the fear by doing the thing. Uh, and the thing, and then you will have a response to the actual thing that you will tell us about 
uh, when you have done it. But do it. That's 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 what I can say. That is if he'll, he'll get the opportunity to come back and tell the story. You know, uh, they, 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 there's been instances Pundisi, when uh, I have something positive to look forward to. And I suddenly get the courage to do whatever and face whatever in the present because I've got something positive to look forward to. Suppose, uh, you know, I know that the coming uh, Wednesday evening, I'm going to have a meeting with the 230 Conversations team. That is something positive to look forward to. And suddenly, you know, in whatever I'm doing during the course of the week between Saturday and Wednesday, uh, you know, I can face anything. I can do anything because I know that nothing can really bring me down because Wednesday, my spirits are going to be up in any event uh, when I'm in a meeting with the guys. And I don't know what the correlation is, if there is any between fear and depression. Because I've realized that when the outlook is negative, then fear, that is when it begins to creep in and eats you up. Sometimes to a point of even failing to conquer things that you are well able to conquer, uh, to a point where some of our friends you know, have reached a point where they even take their lives because the outlook is a negative one. Take these examples that have been used, for instance, yours and Mtanda's. I've been to Gold Rift City as well. Uh, it was always one of those places that I never thought I would be able to handle. Why? Because of what I had had. There's something about fear and faith. You know, faith comes by hearing, the, the Bible says. Uh, fear also seemingly comes by hearing, you know. When people paint this negative connotation on whatever experience it is, you know, that you're going to encounter at a later stage, then that dictates whether or not you want to have that experience. So I, I take my experience, for instance, when I went to uh, Old Rift City. I was very afraid, like so, so afraid. But eventually, when I got that first courage to take on those rides, then I realized, no, man, this thing... You know, I can do this. And I mean, I ended up going back and back. I was like, where is this terror in this tower of terror? Uh, and that is, I didn't even take my glasses off, uh, by the way. Uh, so I, I, I saw it in its entirety. Um, and, I, I, you know, afterwards you're like, but I mean, I, I, I can handle this. But the, the, the negative outcome that was present before I went on was, what if this thing falls off? When last did they maintain this thing? Uh, I mean, I, like, can I really count on, 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 on this uh, steel? Is it really, really reliable? You know, what, what if this code breaks? So, 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 so the outlook, you, you're already focused on the outlook. You're not looking forward. None of us go on those rides to look forward, you know, to the excitement and this adrenaline rush and that will feel alive and this will be an exciting thing. You know, all those Red Bull tendencies. We never had any of, of those things in mind. We're always thinking about the worst possible scenario. And that is when fear then begins to creep in. So generally now speaking, um, you know, about issues of life and policy, I believe that if we have a positive outlook to life, you know, when Ellen White writes in education and says to us, we have no reason to fear. She doesn't leave it there. She says, except we forget. So she then makes us rest on a positive outlook that God always takes you through. You know, I was even uh, reading uh, in the book of Joshua 1 verses 6, the opposite of fear, I think, is courage, strength. And he says, be strong and of good courage. But I need reason to be strong and to be of good courage. And then he goes on and says, for unto these people shall thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. And I know you see, the big fan of the land, your, your background says it all. Uh, you know, th there's always a positive outlook. And my personal experience, yes, there's moments where I am overcome here and there, but the personal experience that I've had is if you always look at Unkulunkulu, God, and the end result, then you can take anything on because victory is already guaranteed 
uh, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But I think Taki has something even much more interesting uh, to share with us. So I'm going to ask uh, that he unmutes himself. Let's get the hands coming up, guys. Let's talk. I tell Hello, can you hear me? Hey, we can hear you. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, Mafunzi, and good afternoon, everyone. I just want to make a, a follow up on the question that uh, Muta asked regarding faith uh, and uh, fear. Because I've heard a lot of people that quote Genesis 126 that we are giving we are given dominion over everything. So the mere fact that we are given dominion over everything was we are not supposed to have faith, I mean to have fear as Christians. And then and again there's there is one clip that I once saw of a pastor, a, a, a Caucasian pastor from this charismatic church is the way he was preaching holding a snake on his hand as a proof that as Christians were given dominion over everything. So we're not supposed to, to have fear on anything. So I don't know if the pastor can comment based on that particular quote that people always give. Thanks. Thank you so much, Taki. And Mpunis, I'm going to hand over to you shortly. I want to share with you one or two comments that uh, have come through. I'm going to start with Facebook. Umavui uh, Atiena. I think the only thing that it helps us to be able to overcome fear uh, is because we believe God is with us uh, and holding us uh, with his hand every time or everywhere we go. And on that, on, on whatever we do, sorry, I'm not doing justice, so I'm going to read it over. I think the only thing that helps us to be able to overcome fear is because we believe God is with us and holding us with his hand everywhere we go and on whatever we do. But fear is always there, not affecting or disturbing us. I was once troubled in my life in such a way that it felt as if I'm alone. But God showed me something strange by uh, having that feeling that there's someone holding my hand. And after I stood up and became stronger, thanks a lot for the lesson, my brother. I concur there with Mavui. It's the same with me when I used to walk at 10 at night and you know, I believe that there's a fire that surrounds me and no thug would mug me. And they never mugged me because I believed God uh, was with me. Uh, and then there's also a comment in the section that I saw from uh, uh, as well, there's one, I think I'd be surprised if anyone who, does experience, who doesn't experience some level of fear doing it, even when they've done it before. But to respond to the question, I think you also fear because you imagine the West. It would be ideal not to watch the videos. They will make it worse. Fear is also contagious. So hearing other people's experiences may have its toll on you. There's definitely another comment that Katlaho gave earlier on, and I'm just gonna want to find it, there it is. I don't think that fear is an indication of poor Christianity or a lack of faith. Fear is a normal human response to anything that serves as a threat or an inconvenience. Fear is part of human life. It only becomes a problem when it paralyzes you and leads to doubt in God. We may fear, but it is expected for us to carry on. Um, let's continue lifting up the hands. I will pick us up uh, shortly. There is the story. Bundisi, you heard it. Should we now go around carrying snakes? Should I go into the lion's den as an illustration? that we have overcome and God has given us dominion. <laughs> okay, let, let, let me take them in order. Ne? I want to comment on something you said and then um, <clears throat> so on and so forth. Uh, you spoke about fear and depression. I think uh, fear, anxiety, depression, worry are all interrelated. Uh, but I think to properly understand them, we will need a um, professional in behavioral sciences and psychology to deal with those. Uh, but I just want to say that one other um, 
<clears throat> one other thing to deal with fear. This is not a fear story, but a model that can be applied in fear. When uh, the, the sick man's four friends opened the, the roof of the house and lowered him down before Jesus, sometimes we just need support. Um, and also, um, you, you spoke about a positive outlook. Sometimes when we, I'll give you an example. There's a time <clears throat> last, sometime last year, late last year, um, there was a post I wanted to post on my, on my profile. Now, I was worried about the reactions that will come, right? So I wrote the post on my notes section um, on my phone. And I kept it there for some time because of this fear that what if people take it negatively? Um, so I decided, you know what? If people take it negatively, they take it negatively. Um, we move on. Uh, because this, I am doing this, I believe, and it is right. And this is, well, this post got the most reactions in the history of me posting. Now, the reason why I'm saying this is if we give... Uh, the reality is, in life, there will be negative, there will be positive results, but we must keep on moving. I mean, Jeremiah was, was uh, experienced a lot as a prophet, but he still kept on with the work, even with this reality that the reactions that are coming are not as pleasant as one would hope. Uh, so, in reality, we need a positive outlook on life. Uh, but we may also need to accept that sometimes life isn't um, as nice to us as we would hope. I'm not saying we must we must have negative outlooks. No, 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 no. We must definitely have positive outlooks. Um, and all the way to said acceptance is key. Now, in the matter of the snake, hey, this one is difficult. Um, <laughs> The matter of dominion is quite a, a, a hefty one. But realistically speaking, um, if you don't give your dog, I mean, if it's a vicious dog, proper big dog, if you don't give your dog food today, it might bite you tomorrow. Um, you still have dominion, but a man, a man owned a tiger, or was it a lion? When it grew up, it ate him. Um, Yes, there's, there's confirmation. Um, when the lion grew up, it ate him. This man raised it since it was a cub. Um, so, well, dominion or not, well, yes, we may have dominion, but realistically speaking, um, the natural order of things, things will, will fight. Uh, it doesn't mean you must jump into lion's dens and, and, and tempt God and, and this. Um, you know, let's let's not let's not try things that uh, you may not have a testimony to tell after. Uh, is there something else? Oh, um, I don't know who said. Oh, the comment on Facebook. I forgot the name. Um, the Israelites. I wanted to say, the Israelites took the promised land because of God. Um, I might have said this, I might not have said this. Um, the pursuit was tricky, the pursuit was scary, but God was that key that allowed them to access uh, the promised land. And our faith in God must allow us to pursue um, because some things will be scary. I mean, if you lose a loved one and you stand by their grave, um, you, 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 you start to ask questions, will I survive without this person? How will life be without this person? Who will I do this with? Who, who will I do that with? And this fear may cripple us, um, but with God, we pursue. Um, I don't know if I've answered those ones fully uh, to the satisfaction of the askers, if that's a word. I don't know if Ashley's still around. No, Ash is still around. I think he's just gone okay. for just a couple of minutes. So I'll just take over All for right. the meantime while, while he comes through. Okay, thank you for for that one. No so I think one of the questions that came through um, is, is the whole idea that is, is fear, if fear is natural, then is it something that God has made? Does God want us to be fearful? And then another thing that Michelle, I think it's Michelle, 
She said, do we honestly and truly fear God? And, and I've, I've often um, read the theatrics around God and his appearance. I mean, that man speaks like the sound of, a, of water, gushing water, fire, wheels in, out, there's light all over. That's, that's a fearful scene to begin with. What, 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 what is the actual context of what it means to fear God? Um, should we have that kind of fear as well? Or we are aligning ourselves totally to a fear that is to do with us just basically obeying him. God is not our uncle. Fundis. I think, I think it would be nice it would be fine to say that. That God is not our, our uncle. He's not our friend. He, he does not eat nandos. Neither does he wear shorts. He is God for who he is and fearful for what he is. So how then should we approach him? Are we getting to a point where we are pretty much casual Christians and the fear factor in the Christian circle is no longer there? You know, maybe some questions are along those lines. Let me just quickly unmute you if you want to respond to that. I also want to read a couple of, um, uh, I think there was a couple of uh, messages here. Let me quickly try to, to read on that one day. I think it, it, this was all to do with what uh, you had said about snakes and all that. And Van Hedden is putting across the scriptural um, basis on Luke chapter 10, verse 19. I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and not to over and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. And maybe in that line, Fundis, I'll put you on the spot as well. When do we know we are now at presumption um, or at faith? Because we say, well, the antidote, correct me if I'm wrong, the antidote of fear is faith. Correct me if I'm wrong there. Um, and then when do we know that we're now at presumption? Do such verses actually make sense in our time? I've given you authority to trample in snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. Let me give you quickly now. Um, from DC, let me just unmute you if you have any response on that or anybody else in the platform here who might want to come through while we wait for Brother Ashley to take us back. Go ahead and finish. Okay. Um... Just remind me there, what is the first one I'm supposed to address? Sorry about that. Okay, no, it's fine. I was, well, you can start with the last one, <laughs> if you're okay with that. Um, the one of presumption, how far we stretch when it comes to the whole idea of faith, is faith being the antidote of fear. Um, when do we get to points of presumption? And then I'd spoken also, I think the first one was about the fear factor in the church. Is, is, okay. is, do we honestly fear God? That was, I think, a question from Michelle. Uh, on that aspect you can go ahead um okay let me start with the pre presumption one <clears throat> now the christian experience becomes quite tricky when we we want to do things or say things outside of god in the name of god uh now now this is my personal understanding and don't crucify me for it <laughs> but my understanding of faith is somewhat of a personal connection right um and so this this connection is the launching pad of Pesua, right? Let me give an example, especially on the terms of um, nothing will harm you. There is a story where Paul is bitten by a viper. The details are a bit blurry, um, but Paul was doing something, a viper comes, bites him, he shakes it off, he's unaffected. Did Paul go out to the viper and poke it? Now that's the difference. Um, God's God's, God, God does not command you to provoke things just because he's protecting you from there. God commands to do a certain thing. So for example, God commands the Israelites to seize the promised land but the Canaanites are in the way, so they must be moved. God doesn't just say remove the, 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 the Canaanites just for fun. Um, 
they they may not be harmed, but it doesn't mean you should go out now and just um, uh, go to 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 snakes where 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 they live and just poke them and you know it it that's that's I think that's that's my point. I I hope I'm 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 clear there. The fear factor in church. Um, the word fear can mean two different things. Um, fear as in this um, response that elicits anxiety. Um, uh, fear, the, 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 the fear of God is different uh, from the fear of a lion. So your fear of a lion would be this worrisome uh, response to a threat. But God isn't a threat. Um, that fear would be worship, would or would be in re reference to worship or a fullness of, I'll say submission for lack of a better word, uh, to this being. Now, the God who comes as thunder also comes as a baby. <laughs> uh, the God who comes as thunder also speaks in a sweet, small voice. Uh, to the prophet, I just don't remember where. Um, so even though God ought to be respected, uh, I do not believe God is a dragon to be feared as we fear um, what we've been talking about. Uh, the, 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 the fear of God is slightly different and I believe it would be a separate discussion. Um, yeah, because that one will take time. Yeah. All yeah. right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, Fundis, for that one. Um, I think we've got a hand up here. We're gliding towards the end of our lesson anyway. I want to give over to Emang. I'm going to unmute you very quickly and you go ahead with your comment as we speak about the fear factor. As we begin the year, how fearful are we, Emang? Take us through. Um, if someone is in Emang's um, gadget, my name is Tepang. And oh, I wrote okay. a comment here that says, authority to trample is not permission to trample. There's a vast difference between the exercise of authority and permission to overkill using the same authority. When God gives us the authority over serpents and over this and over that, he did not instruct us to go with perfidious mind to actually just handle them and do stuff as an expression of sin. In our path, to actually undertake mission, God has protected us from what will naturally harm us. But so says someone who was not protected from prison. That is, that is Paul, he was not protected from prison. He was protected from a snake and protected from a, a tumult in the sea, but not protected from shackles in prison. He was not protected from Nero. He was not protected from those who held him in Rome. Interestingly, we find that um, God still allows things that have been enlisted uh, as those upon which you have authority. He does not necessarily remove their harm. That's one. Presumption is when one begins to believe that um, authority over a subject means that you have control over everything. When God delimits the harm that things may actually inflict on you, he does not naturally remove it altogether from his instant of harm. And ordinarily, um, when you go to the book of Genesis, you know that before the fall, we had authority over everything. And um, that is why I, I, I normally uh, speak to patriarchists who say they have, according to their original design, um, authority over women. And I, I, I tell them that because they quote the book of Genesis, then I simply tell them that in the same book, you have authority over mosquitoes, but mosquitoes are now pestering you. You have authority over dogs. You've got authority over cats. Some of you are scared of scorpions, but you want to know that this is an old age, old age that says that God has protected us with favor above all that is natural. He does not, however, protect us from presumptuous minds. Sometimes, when you want to go and make a performance, you'd be like Peter who was walking on water and walked into water and nearly walked underwater. 
simply because he became presumptuous. See, when God wants to praise himself, when God wants to set up a, a circumstance for his name to be praised, he will actually allow nature to behave the way that he desires it should. Sometimes God, when God says, I protect you from a storm, he does not make, he does not make sure that there's no storm. Make sure he provides a storm and he protects you from within. Others be think it possible that, um, no, God is gonna protect you from a storm by removing the storm. No, he cannot protect you from something that doesn't exist. How many snakes do we know that have missed biting us when we could not see? Maybe someday um, on hindsight, we'll look back and say, God has protected me from this and from that and from this and from that, because he'll prove his, inadequ he'll prove his adequacy. Um, God does not say you will see the snakes from which you have authority. Some of the snakes that uh, are supposed to bite us will simply move away and never even come to our path because we are with God in the path of missions. And then lastly, God does not use this particular protection against fear simply because we, we want to perform some uh, religious theatrics like carrying a snake up, up in there. Um, I think that was a trained church snake, uh, like the performances we see on wheelchairs and stuff. You know, we got some people with trained snakes that can even know when to sit and they can play with kids at home. There are some snakes here. I think you should get that Caucasian pastor to come this side and touch some snakes here. We want to see something. It will end in tears. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Pastor Park. <laughs> it will end in tears. Okay, Pastor wants to respond to that one right there. Uh, let me just unmute you quickly. I think Brother well, Ashley is I, I here. Managed. Yeah, you I managed. managed to Perfect. Go ahead. <laughs> Church snake. <laughs> no, I, I don't. I don't want to respond to it. I just want to add on to something there, just to 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 prove something. Um, when you look at uh, the time when when the Israelites were moving this 40 year travel, uh, there was a time when uh, snakes attacked them. Now, those who've studied that tell me, I get what I'm saying what they told me. Uh, they say that the language there suggests that um, God had covered or protected them from uh, threats in the desert. But in his anger, he withdrew his protection and things came in. Now, I just want to, 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 to emphasize there that they did not go pursuing the snakes. They did their mission. Uh, they were going towards the promised land. And God's protection protected them from these threats around them. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that those threats must be important imported and adopted uh, into uh, the practice. So let's leave them out a bit. <laughs> All right, thank you so much, Ifundi today. I'm waiting for Brother Eshi to come through. I think ooh, 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 Brother Tepang was telling us here uh, the, the idea that just because you have um, authority to take, to, to trample doesn't mean that you have permission to, to trample. And that's a good thing to remember about the whole concept of fear. Someone, um, let me just read this statement, actually, I think there is. I'm gonna read this quickly. I think it's from Utima. Thank you, Pastor, for an insightful and thought-provoking lesson. I think fear is a psychological process. It is some, it's something designed to help fight or flight. Uh, fear is present as a mechanism for us to protect ourselves. You fear Mjolo, uh, maybe those that in Botswana don't know Mjolo is, uh, is a pandemic currently in South Africa. Uh, social pandemic, Jolo. You fear Jolo to guard your heart. You fear height because you don't want to get injured. If humans did not have a concept of um, fear, they would walk into volcanic ash barefoot. True. In my view, the best way to overcome fear is to make gradual steps. Every journey starts by a step. If you fear bungee jumping, first try uh, abseiling, zip lining, then lower bungees before going to attempt the, the Blue Crown's bridge. I think it's probably uh, where I'm gonna go to. 
It's also important to understand the reason for your fear because perhaps that is what hinders you from progressing. If you're scared of snakes, watch documentaries on snakes, familiarize yourself. The more you learn about them, the easier it gets. <laughs> but biblical fear and the fear of God is a different topic. We'd have to look at in depth right there. Speaking of which then, uh, Ashley, just put your video on now. Speaking of which, I would like to have a question. Um, somebody, I was listening to, to testimonies today at a certain church. And um, I, I feel like testimonies at a church put people under a lot of pressure. Um, it's, it's, it's a God who's doing so much for everybody else, sometimes not for you. And as we begin the year, we've gone for a 10 days, uh, most of us, 10 days fasting program. Uh, we've been praying. There is an inherent fear that it's not the first time I'm doing 10 days. I did it last year. I even did it in 2019. Maybe I tried it also in 2016. And God doesn't seem to be, to be answering. You know, um, there's that fear to pray, to say, we, we, spoke, we speak about the God, who, the nothing to fear for the, uh, for the future, except, except you forget what, what happened in the past. But what did happen in the past for some average Christian? Nothing. Nothing at all. So, so how do we address those kind of heartbreaking situations where for five years I can't stand up and say, this is a testimony. Let's, let's leave the whole thing off, but I'm breathing. It's so are you, right? Yeah, breathing is a testimony. Yeah, it's fine. You can walk. Yes, I can. You can talk. Yes, I can. But I want more from life because God has said he can give more. So there's that fear that comes with starting a year. How do we address that kind of situation as I give over to uh, the main host, Ashley? You're muted, Ash. You're muted. Thank you. Thank you so, so much for that. Um, Fundis, do you perhaps want to tackle that before we reach the, what do they call him, the, the conclusion stages of our presentation this afternoon? Uh, let's perhaps just take on Tandazo's uh, comment there uh, on the testimonies. Uh, so the question is, if I understand it right, um, how do we deal with a situation where for five years, I have no evidence that God is listening to my prayers. Is that, is, is that, is that how I, have I interpreted it right? Uh, yes, sir. Um, and the fact that it, 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 it pretty much gets you very fearful to try and put your foot on the next step because the previous steps, they've not been confirmed. So there's the fear of starting a new year. People have stopped writing resolutions because I have pending resolutions from 2016. You know, how do we how do we deal with that? How do we deal with that? Okay, um, I will answer it in two forms. Um, theologically, because you are speaking of testimonies in church, and then uh, speaking to the human experience in life. <clears throat> now, number one, many people have tried to understand why sometimes God is silent. Um, and many people have failed because he's God. We, we cannot speak on his behalf. Sometimes um, he does things that we may not understand. Now, it is very difficult for me to then say um, how to reconcile that. But um, even though God has said, I mean, let me give an example. It took 40 years for God to speak to Moses directly. Moses killed a man. He, he was a shepherd. Is it 40 years? It took a long time um, uh, for, for, for God to speak to Moses. It took um, sometimes uh, God's silence is in anticipation of something. Um, we may not always have a formula for God's action and for God's intervention and for how God does his things. But what remains is a faith in Jesus Christ that no matter what, we still remain um, uh, in, 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 in faith with Jesus Christ. So uh, testimonies, well, 
people are telling their testimonies. We tell testimonies to encourage others to hold on. Not so. So we shouldn't feel like if we don't have a testimony yet, um, then we are not Christians. Your time will come, I believe. And then, realistically speaking, um, in the fear of the year, right? So whether you sit down or just think uh, and you look forward into the year and you say, I want to do this, I want to do this, I want to do this. Um, one thing that helps is taking action. Um, if, if you're going to, okay, if you say, I want to be a preacher, right? Let me give you a, an easy example. If you say, I want to become a preacher this year, um, I'm going to preach, I'm going to preach better uh, than Bo Funisuma Zibugo and Funisubulose and, and them, right? I'm going to preach better than Ashley Ive. Um, you don't just stand up behind the pulpit and hum a fire sermon. It starts with one, sitting down and reading and, you know, um, interpreting and applying it and having that first sermon. Um, my point is sometimes the, 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 not the cure, but the medicine for fear of action in the future is action. So if you are not sure about that business you want to start, start it. Um, if you are not sure about that book you want to read, read it. If you are scared of uh, uh, going to the gym, go. Um, so I believe we must, in our both Christian experience and human experience, look at it in a balance. So how God responds, God sometimes doesn't respond how we want to. God doesn't always respond how we want to. I like that one. If you are scared to ask a girl out, ask. Look, if you want to ask a girl out, you can't sit in your prayer room and pray, God, that girl, I like him. Or that guy, I like him. Uh, it, it's highly unlikely that God will make the person magically come to you, knock on your door, enter the house, and into your prayer room and say, I'm here. Uh, <laughs> you, yes, there is that maintenance of faith and persistence of faith and that action in, 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 in God, whether God is silent or not, but there is also a need to act. So there needs to be a balance um, in, 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 in moving, in our, in our movement, especially as human, in our human experience. When you stand up and say, I'm human, um, it must mean that you are active in living. Um, of course, through the power of Jesus, but you are still active um, in your experience. Um, I hope I've answered that adequately. If not, forgive me. <laughs> Thank you so much, Pastor. You know, the moment you start speaking about girls and asking out, suddenly the chat box is lit with comments. Uh, but thank you so much, Mpundisi. What an amazing presentation. Um, and we, as a team at 230 Conversation, would just love to th thank you. Take this opportunity to say thank you so much for making time and sharing with us this powerful presentation. Uh, for those of you that might want his PowerPoint presentation, I'm going to ask him, and if he's happy, um, we will be distributing it accordingly. Uh, thank you so much to everybody that is tuned in. If you still have a, a question, I know that there's some of you that do not love to ask questions in the formal setup. Yes, the aft sins remain here. Uh, under the new dispensation, the old things remain. Uh, so we have not completely eradicated practices of the old covenant. We are going to be having our after scenes discussion as soon as this presentation is over. Uh, Michelle G uh, says that she wants to know about the land. Yes, Mpundisi, maybe if you can stick around once we've formally wrapped this up, we can uh, engage in a short discussion on, on, on the land podcast. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much for coming out. The guys on Facebook, we're going to be ending the live stream shortly. But before we do, I want to share with you our uh, announcements that we had for the day. Um, let me quickly. 
Okay, there we go. So it's not in the windows closed. It's bear with me there. I'm gonna bring it back. Um, and there we go. Um, actually, I should start from the top. 230 Conversations, we are back and we are excited. Thank you all for joining us this afternoon for a wonderful discussion on the fear factor. Um, and obviously, like the pastor said, we were looking at fear from a certain perspective. Uh, maybe one day the pastor might avail himself to discuss fear, uh, you know, from uh, a worship perspective. Uh, but 230 Conversation is exactly that, thoughts, discussions, facilitations. Um, and there it was. Hi, everybody, the 230 Conversation team. Once again, would love to welcome you back to yet another exciting year. We hope you are ready for what we have in store for you. Uh, see that there's a poll that is already up. All of you guys are already answering in the poll. Uh, positive feedback. You enjoy the presentation. It's going to be a great year, and we are looking forward to it. So buckle up, uh, and it is important that you invite your friends and your family I think there's still a lot of people that aren't aware that we are now back. Please let them know. Uh, if you need data, contact um, Tandazo in the main, myself uh, in the alternative, contact Tandazo. Uh, we've got the data fund, it's up and running. The Northern Conference injected 10,000 rand into our account. We are eternally grateful. We are grateful to each and every one of you that continue to also inject funds into the data fund. Let's continue doing that. Uh, we are on YouTube. That icon there is for YouTube, the first one on the left, followed by Instagram. Follow us there. We are on Facebook. We are also not yet on Twitter, but I think we're going to be opening a Twitter account. Look in into starting things like spaces, et cetera, et cetera. We've recently gone on onto TikTok, which is an amazing advertising platform. Uh, we are try we're trying to find a way as well on how we can professionally um, you know, host lives on TikTok of our sessions, uh, you know, I think would be able to attract a lot of young people. We were inundated over the holiday period, even the last time, I think in the previous year, when we went away, a lot of people were coming to us, when are you coming back? Uh, we want to take this opportunity to thank God for how he has been utilizing this platform. And I think for some of us on the platform, we might not realize, you know, how far reaching these letters, uh, testimonies, how they've managed to overcome, how they managed to get the will to continue, you know, with this uh, journey called life. How many uh, of them overcame depression? How many of them were, you know, empowered uh, to start things and act on their ideas and stuff like that? So we are very grateful to people like Mfundisi and all of the speakers that we've had. I think by now, We've probably had um, over what, I don't know, I'm sure we've surpassed the 100 mark, if not even close to what, 150 speakers that have taken their time to come out here. So thank you so much. If you have a speaker you want us to bring on, uh, let us know. Those are the social media handles. Uh, follow us, guys, and uh, let's keep in touch. Uh, thank you so much, Mfundisi, the fear factor. Uh, we are going to be discussing beholding a new thing, uh, starting a new year. I think that is in the upcoming week with Umfundisi. Oh, Isaac Apau, what a brilliant speaker, phenomenal pastor, just like the one that we just had. I've listened to his presentations as well uh, online, a guy that knows how to interact with the young people uh, without compromising the gospel. And he is going to be joining us uh, on the 22nd. Uh, Umbumi is coming back, forgive us, that surname is incorrectly spelled, Umbumi K. Bonane with an E at the end is com coming with self-audit, the toxicity in use. And I know that the house is going to be full when she comes. The son of thunder, Rendani, will be here discussing the angry black man. Uh, we are, this is going to be our patriarchy uh, series. I think we're also going to have a matriarchy uh, series. Um, Feb is uh, the patriarchy series. You don't want to miss this. The son of thunder uh, will be joining us. And I think this is still also under the Patriarchy series, Men and Suicide, The Scourge. Uh, Pastor Lester Parkinson will be joining us on the 12th of February, 2022. Remember, let us know if you need airtime, uh, if you need data, uh, we are very willing to assist. At the moment, we are able to assist. Uh, keep on making those contributions. Uh, get in touch with Ntandazo, guys. We welcome the two rent contribution, a hundred rent uh, contribution. Um, these monies are used for nothing else but you know to cater for our data fund. 
Uh, that's all we do with them. Um, so thank you so much and may God richly bless you. Uh, if you are on Facebook, we are going to be stopping the live stream from Facebook. Uh, the link to Zoom was shared as well as the login details. They were shared in the commentary section of Facebook. So if you wanna come and engage with the pastor on his projects and also ask him uh, some offline questions, please feel free to join us on Zoom. From me to you and the entire team of 230 Conversations, God bless you in abundance. Amen and amen. Shall we pray? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your loving kindness and mercy. Thank you so much for the pastor whom you've given the energy, the zeal to come and share with us, dear Father, as we're starting off a new year, whatever fears might be uh, before us, dear Father, you have inspired him as a young man to speak to young people about how to be able to stand courageous in the face of fear and rather use it to our advantage. We thank you so much. May you bless him. May you bless his studies as he's about to conclude them. Bless his family, dear Father. May you increase his wisdom, dear Father, and may he grow in the same manner that your son Christ grew, dear Father. May he become a beacon of light that will continue spreading your word, dear Father, without any fear, without any favor. May he stand, dear Father, zealous and focused. We pray for this platform, dear Father. Thank you so much, dear God, for making it possible that we come back here. Each and every one that is joined in, in, into this platform, the families that they represent, the struggles that they represent, the blessings that they represent, we put all of them, dear Father, in your name. May you bless this institution that you have established, dear Father, all of the upcoming programs, the speakers that are going to be coming up. Let this be a platform where many young people will be saved, a platform where many young people will be able to gain confidence to stand and work for you, dear Father. When all is said and done, we give glory to you for thou art worthy this being our humble prayer in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen.